<laughs> My lips are burning. <laughs> Geico, over 85 years of savings and service. Tigers have taken the field. Christian Kamal to take his last couple of field pitches. Buzz Tigers here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Fans have the right equipment to take on any job linked to the land. Visit Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana at sunequip.com. And this inning is brought to you by AccuTemp Services. Don't let AC or heater outages keep you on the bench this year. Text Home Run to 31996 to get your Tiger tune up. AccuTemp Services, proud partners of LSU Athletics. And the game time temperature is 83 degrees. The wind's blowing out a little bit to center field, and it's Really a crystal clear, beautiful night here at the box. Once again, Buzz. Couldn't, couldn't think of a better place to be watching Tiger baseball. They've been playing great on a six-game winning streak. For all of you watching at home today, we'll remind you that we are the radio broadcast crew for the LSU Sports Radio Network. So we're going to give you a little more details than you're probably used to here and on the old TV broadcast. Kanan Dodge, Ben McNaughton, and Kevin Bermudez to lead it off for the Cardinals here in the top of the first inning. Dodge, a right-handed hitter. You know, Buzz, I look at this lineup, and the one thing that popped out were five seniors in the starting nine, six if you include the starting pitcher. Fastball taken for a strike, 94 miles an hour, and we're underway. Yeah, it's a and, veteran team. And, and then three juniors, only one sophomore in the lineup. But little quickly ahead. This one misses away. It's one and one. Lamar located in Beaumont, Texas, right across the state line. Coach Will Davis won't get Kane and Dodge from Karen Crow, Louisiana, excuse me. Missed upstairs there. It's two and one now to Mr. Dodge, the shortstop tonight, hitting 229 on the year. Breaking ball, catches the top of the strike zone. It's two and two now. As we mentioned, Lamar only hitting 241 as a team, but we've heard this word a lot. They're gritty, they're going to grind, going to battle at the plate. This one's up in the strike zone, fouled back into the net. Count remains at two balls and two strikes. Fans get low-rate, long-term financing now on powerful Kubota tractors, mowers, and utility vehicles. Visit LSUKubotaDealers.com for your nearest Kubota dealer and test drive a Kubota today. Big breaking ball misses just downstairs, and that will make the count full now to the Cardinals' leadoff batter. Swing and a miss there. A nice pitch from Christian Little as Brady Neal, a little excited, zips the throw down right over the head of Napolt down at third base. But one away for the Tigers. At 3-2, Little went. That looks like that cutter that we saw the other day when Little yeah. came in and, and has a lot of confidence in it. Went 3-2 with that pitch. That tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, definitely wasn't the fastball. That sits up in the mid-90s. Breaking ball misses high there. We've got one down. We're in the top of the first inning for all of you that just tuned in. That strikeout is brought to you by Super One Foods. Great quality at super low prices. There's a good pitch on the outside corner. Looked like the cutter. That's Cutter sits at high 80s, low 90s. We've seen it hit 90-91. Fastball, four-seamer sits in that mid-90s range. 1-1 one, one pitch fouled toward the LSU dugout. And Christian Little gets ahead to McNaughton. One ball and two strikes. Well, I thought he had great command of it in his last outing. And early in this game, only one batter. But looks like he's got very good command of it right now. That's when it matters. Had him out on the front foot with another cutter. Swung right through it. That's two quick strikeouts. Another Super One Food strikeout for Christian Little. Who looks dialed in right now. I asked Coach Jay Johnson in the pregame about his defense. Everybody talking about the pitching and, and the offense, which has been great. But defensively, they rank, they're ranked first nationally. Yeah. And he said, well, he said, what helps with that, too, is when you strike a lot of guys out, it you does. don't get as many opportunities. Another right-hander, Kevin Bermudez, digs in. 
the first of many seniors again in the starting offensive lineup. Five total. Six if you include the pitcher. Big swing there. Came up empty. It's one and one. Coach Johnson did say they, they, it was a point of emphasis, though, in this offseason to really work on the defense. And even though the strikeouts are up, then that does help. They've been very good behind their pitchers. This one is hit to Napoleon at third base. He blocks it up, quickly gloves it, and fields it over to, excuse me, fires it over to Beloso. One, two, three inning for Christian Little to get out of the top of the first. And for the Tigers, they will send up Dugas, Morgan, and Cruz when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. top of the first for Christian Little. Fans, you can listen to the Jay Johnson Show Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. on Eagle 98.1 in Baton Rouge and on the LSU Sports mobile app. Or you can watch it live at TJ Ribs on South Acadian. The first edition will air on March 27th. Dugas, Morgan, and Cruz will lead it off for the Tigers in the bottom of the first inning. We'll get you a defensive alignment for the Cardinals. Didn't get a chance to get to it. Christian Little was working quick. First pitch from Waterhouse misses away to Dugas. He's ahead 1-0. and This one is hit on the screws, but right at center fielder Ben McNaughton. And he will put out Dugas F to 8 for out number 1. Left to right, starting in the outfield. Kevin Bermudez is in left. Again, Ben McNaughton out in center. Luke Bumpus is in right field. Around the infield, Ethan Ruiz is at the hot corner. Kanan Dodge at shortstop. Kirkland Banks is at second, and Josh Blankenship's at first. This one is scorched, but right at the third baseman, Ruiz, off the bat of Morgan, went right down the third base line. Couldn't have hit it much harder, Buzz. That's two very two good swings by both Dugas and Trey Morgan. That one was right on the nose, and uh, sometimes you guys got a future family to think about. I don't. I don't know that I'd have stayed in front of that one. Uh, sometimes it's, it's just you can't you can't he place the ball. There was nowhere to go, but he right had up. to catch it, or it might have killed him. Now Dylan Cruz, who also hits the ball extremely hard, takes the first pitch, low and in for ball one. Uh, he had a couple balls to straightaway center in Monday's win over Butler. One got out of the ballpark. Cruz lets ball two go, and he's in a hitter's count with two outs, two quick outs here in the bottom of the first. By the way, Ryan Snell, the battery mate with Quinn Waterhouse, the pitcher. Downstairs for ball three, Dylan Cruz, 3-0. and I think that's what's so impressive about Cruz. We've talked about him multiple times, but that he can hit the ball to all parts of the ballpark and hit it out of the ballpark at all parts. 
And this one's ball four. And I'll tell you another thing. You, you really don't. You really don't see him swing at that pitcher's pitch, the one that, you know, grazes the outside corner at the knees. He's he's confident enough to wait for that mistake on the thighs, and then he's good enough when he gets to two strikes to let it travel as deep as he wants and continue to stay alive until he either draws a walk like that Correct. or he puts the ball in play, and usually it's got some velocity on it. Another guy that can hit it hard, Tommy White digs in. Big hack, swing and a miss. It's 0-1. White's bat came alive over the weekend, hit a couple home runs, is now driven in 10 RBIs. This one high and in, and it's one ball and one strike now to the transfer from North Carolina State. The 1-1 just misses off the edge, and it's 2-1. and one. Waterhouse last few fastballs been at 89 miles an hour, and that's where he's going to live. He'll touch a 90 every now and then, but it's going to be 86, 87, 89 miles an hour. Fastball misses high. Tommy White now in a hitter's count. It's three and one. I tell you, you don't see many 85, 86, 87 mile an hour <laughs> fastballs anymore. It's crazy. You really don't. The 3-1 pitch hit on the screws right at the right fielder. He's tracking back, but he doesn't have enough room. This one off the top of the wall. Tommy Tanks will stand in with a lead or a double, a two-out double, which will score Cruz from first base. Tigers on top, one to nothing. Well, add another hard hit ball to the inning as that one was hit extremely hard. And I'm running. I'm surprised course. it didn't go through the wall, Doug. I mean, I keep uh, on the screws just seems to fit for it, yeah. the, the couple balls that the Tigers have hit this inning. I don't know if you can find the middle of the barrel any better. And now Cade Beloso again, red hot over the weekend, average up to 636. He had two home runs, takes the first pitch, a breaking ball, low and away for ball number one. Well, that's another thing that's impressive with Tommy White. When you see him, you think, okay, this is going to be a pool hitter, a guy that's going to just turn and burn. But the two homers he hit over the weekend were to right field. That ball there was hit off the wall to right. That one's upstairs to Beloso. Had to get out of the way. It's 2-0. So he, he's been using the whole field as well. Yeah, both of his home runs out there. 2-0 pitch, misses off the outside edge. And Kate Beloso now in a 3-0 count. And speaking of home runs to right field, Beloso had a couple this past weekend. He was 4-4 four for four as a pinch hitter and then got another two hits in the Monday game against Butler. Ball four, low and away. Beloso takes his walk to first base. The second walk of the inning issued by Waterhouse. And Jordan Thompson will make his way to the right-handed batter's box. Thompson hitting 351 coming into the game. Waterhouse had three walks and seven innings coming into the game. And a little unusual, although I don't blame him for pitching around Cruz a little bit, but... Uh, Cruz almost looked like more of an unintentional, yeah, intentional I walk. Agree. They weren't going to give him anything to hit. Now here's Jordan Thompson. They miss away there. And Thompson ahead 1-0. But a little unusual with the couple walks in this inning. Waterhouse normally competes. We talked about him being a senior, being around for quite a while in college. We'll have a mound visit. And Try to calm the big guy down. Vince, just like this winning lineup, Centos has the Altsar services for all your business needs. Everything from uniforms to kitchens and restroom solutions. Get ready for the workday with Centos. A little bit of action down in the Lamar bullpen. A couple pitchers starting to jog around a little bit. Yeah, no, nobody yet throwing, just doing a little stretching. Waterhouse back set. The pitch to Thompson, swing and a miss. It's one and one. Right-handed pitcher Landon Odom is the Lamar pitcher down in the bullpen, and he'll start to play a little catch as we talk. 
This one's hit sharply, but foul down toward that Lamar bullpen. And the count moves to one ball and two strikes. Landon Odom out of Gary, Texas. A transfer from Oral Roberts. One, two. Thompson thought about making a hack at that, but stayed back. Good thing. It was high. Two balls, two strikes, two outs now for the Tigers shortstop. Let's this one go low and in. Nice job there from Ryan Snell to keep it in front. And another full count for the Tigers here in the bottom of the first. If you're just joining us, they lead it one to nothing. On a double off the top of the right field wall by Tommy Banks. Runners off with the pitch. That one sails high, and it's ball four. Doug, you, you mentioned Landon Odom down in the bullpen, a transfer out of Oral Roberts. You, you see that actually a bunch on this Lamar roster. And talking to Coach Will Davis, he, that's one thing he actually said. He said, look, it's the new rules now. The transfer portal is a big recruiting tool, and that's he's, he's gone and got a bunch of players from that portal, and that makes up kind of the senior-led team. This one's hit off the hands, but it's going to get up the middle. A nice diving effort by Kirkland Banks to keep it in the infield. The runners will all advance 90 feet. And before I could get his name out of my mouth, Brady Neal with an infield single drives the second run into the game for the Tigers. Yeah, just a little jam shot that was hit perfectly. A you said it, Banks did a good job of it, just keeping it in front and saving a run, but the inevitable two is put on the scoreboard here in the bottom of the first for LSU. Just got him off the fist there. Paxton Kling now, another big weekend, takes the first pitch right at the top of the strike zone. Tiger Faithful did not like the call. It's one, oh, no balls and one strike. Bases loaded. Kling got the average up to 391 over the weekend. Hit his first home run as a Tiger as well. Takes this one low. It's one ball and one strike. Beloso's on at third. Thompson is at second. And Brady Neal with an infield singles on at first. This one's way down in the dirt. Another nice job from Snell to block it up and keep it in front. It's two and one. Tigers would bat around if they can get to Napolt. The ninth hitter in the lineup, who's on deck. The 2-1 pitch. Maybe got him guessing there. Fastball right down the middle. That will bring the deuces wild on the board again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two-two pitch, swing and a miss. Had him out on the front foot. And that'll do it for the bottom of the first inning. Tigers score two runs on two hits. They leave the bases loaded, no errors. We'll come back for the top of the second inning. Four, five, six, due up for the Cardinals here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. $100,000. Visit your favorite lottery retailer and ask for electric cash for your chance to win up to $100,000. You must be at least 21 to purchase. Time now for StubHub. Move up the game. StubHub is rewarding the lucky fans with the best seats in the house. Congratulations.
Jumping off the arm, swinging it. Catcher number nine, Ryan Snow. Christian Little making the first pitch of this top of the second inning. Fouled over the Lamar dugout down the third baseline. It's 0-1. Little was very good in the first inning. 14 pitches, 9 strikes. This one paints the outer edge. Another cutter. No balls and 2 strikes. I love the leg kick. Kind of goes straight out with it, then folds it. Check this out. You see that thing? This one's popped in the air to the right side. Beloso trails back. He'll give way to Dugas at second, who is camped out underneath for out number one. I'm going to go with um, – I'm going to get his name wrong, Doug. I need no, some help. I, need, I, I need think some help you're going to say the guy. Arroyo. 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 I couldn't think of the last name. Bronson get... Arroyo. O A R R O Y O. That's what, it. Bronson that's Arroyo. You, you know, you know, with, yeah. Were we on the same page there, partner? Yeah, yeah I think so. Always. Yeah, played for the Reds. Breaking ball misses high, I think. So it's Bronson Arroyo-ish. Not quite as dramatic, but similar. This one reach out. Two hopper to Napolt. Fields it, fires it across. Beloso on the bag covering, and that's a quick out number two for Christian Little. I've got to give this defensive alignment, I'm sure... Our listeners are dying to know where everybody's playing. And Morgan's in left. Cruz is in center. And Paxton clings out in right. That's the outfield. Christian Little works quick. Kirkland banks the hitter. Swing and a miss. Let go of the bat. Got a piece of Brady Neal. Looks like he'll be okay. It's 0-1. Around the infield for the Tigers left to right is Ben Napolt at the hot corner. Jordan Thompson's at shortstop. Gavin Dugas is at second base. And Cade Beloso is at first. Oh, 1 pitch down in the dirt. That evens up the count to the second baseman for the Cardinals. Breaking ball. Just missed. For those of you watching at home, you saw it didn't miss by much. For our radio listeners, it was close. 2-1 now. This one is hit on the line right through the six hole between the shortstop and third baseman. Banks thinks about trying to stretch it into a double, but Morgan got it in quick enough to get him back to first. And the first base runner and hit of the game is on with two outs here in the top of the second. Yeah, nice piece of hitting by Banks. If he'd have been busting it out of the box, though, Trey Morgan was shifted so far over towards center field. And Napolt at third was playing no doubles down the line. That, that ball was actually hit further to the left field line than, than, uh, you know, than just a regular ball would have been hit. If he'd have been busting out the box, he could have got to second, I think. And I think Coach Will Davis down there was – Kind of telling his team, hey, guys, that's why you, you run hard out of the box. We had a chance to get the second with two outs. Little takes a quick pickoff attempt over to Beloso at first. Banks was in with a slide safely. Again, with two outs now. Luke Bumpus takes the first pitch, a breaking ball, excuse me, a fastball for a ball low and away. The 1-0 skips in the dirt. Neal does a good job of backhanding. Thinks about throwing it back behind Banks over there at first base. But Banks back in quickly. And no throw. Again, a lot of times what defenses will do with two outs is they'll play the no doubles. The corner infielders will play tighter to the line. This one is going to get a back pick throw. And Beloso swipes the tag. But Banks in safely. I love Neal. Neal come up and throw it. Yeah. Well, I think you need to. I think a lot of times little leaguers, they, they do the pump fake too well, much. Well, it helps the pitcher, right? When It just keeps that runner a little closer and a little more uncomfortable at the bag. 3-0 now. The pitch way outside, and that's ball four. First walk of the game, second walk of the season for Christian Little. 
And that'll bring up Jackson Cleveland. I believe Jackson Cleveland is the only underclassman, if you will. He is a sophomore. And he is the only left-handed bat in this lineup. Swing and a miss there. Went for the off-speed down in the dirt. And Little ahead 0-1. Little, excuse me, Cleveland, not many opportunities. Only 10 at-bats on the year. This is only the fourth game he started. The pitch, another swing and a miss on a breaking ball off the outside corner. And Christian Little, one pitch away from ending this two-out threat here in the top of the second inning. The pitch. This one's hit well, but right at Dugas at second. Goes down to a knee and fields it. Beloso keeps the foot on the bag as the throw brought him a little bit down the line towards home plate. But for the Cardinals, no runs on one hit. No errors by the Tigers. They leave two runners stranded. Tigers lead it two to nothing as we head back. It'll be 9 1 2. Do up Napolt, Dugas, and Morgan on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Welcome back. Things are heating up on the field, but whenever you're ready to cool it down, count on slow melt ice, colder, cleaner, and longer lasting. Since 1997, slow melt ice has been a leader in providing packaged ice and bulk ice for commercial, industrial, and retail businesses in South Louisiana. For more info, check them out at slowmeltice.com. That's S L O M E L T I C E.com. 1 1 count to Ben DePolt. The starting third baseman for the Tigers, ninth batter in the lineup. Dugas, the leadoff man, waits on deck. This one is chopped foul down the first baseline. It's one and two. Napolt came in for a pinch hit against Butler on Monday and had a base hit with the bases loaded, drove in two runs. Napolt hits from the left side, takes the one-two pitch, swing and a miss. Chase the off-speed pitch. That's out number one here to start the second. Bottom of the second. Dugas flew out to center field, hit it on the button, but right at McNaughton out in center. He's 0 for 1 today. Average right at 400. First pitch, off-speed, low and away. It's ball one.
Fastball misses high. It's 2-0. Oh. I'll tell you, the, the pitching, everything being sped up, doesn't make reading all the, <laughs> the sponsor advertisements much easier. Fastball misses away. It's 3-0. and oh. You're saying it you, goes quicker. You're saying you, you like a, a review every now and then to give you a little 30-second. Sure, like the pitcher to step off every now and again, be able to. You can't know. do it. No, nope, cannot anymore. 3-0. and oh. Dugas lets it go. Had to take all the way. It's 3-1. and one. Fastball just misses upstairs. Dugas will draw a walk. And Trey Morgan, who hit a missile right at the third baseman last time, will have to wait as the Cardinals will make a pitching change. Tiger fans, get ready to taste victory with a victory grill from Barbecue Guys. Get your victory grill today and become a backyard barbecue champ only at bbqguys.com. Stay with us. Buzzy will tell you all about the new pitcher when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Fans, it's time for a Raising Cane's pitching change. Now pitching for the bar, number 45, Langdon Odom. Odom, the new pitcher for the Cardinals. Pitching change, brought to you by Raising Cane. In the bottom of the second inning, Tigers lead it two to nothing. There's one out, runner at first base. The batter due up is Trey Morgan. And there's a new pitcher, Landon Odom, a right-hander for the Cardinals. Odom making his fifth appearance. He's 0-1 with a 5-6-8 ERA and six and a third innings pitch, giving up four hits, four runs, four walks, and seven strikeouts. Command suspect at times he's 86 to 90 miles an hour he's got the fastball he's got a change up a curveball and he's got a cutter you'll see the cutter from time to time again see if he can throw the ball over the plate and he cannot on that one <laughs> not on that one that one catches morgan right on the lower back he'll jog down to first base dugas will head to second base You're probably thinking, man, LSU gets hit by a lot of pitches, huh, Doug? They must be they really at, do. at the top of the, the nation and hit by pitches at this point. I think it's got to be close. You, you know who's who leads, who's number one in the country for hit by pitches? Mm, let me guess. Who was it I told you the other day had all the home runs? Florida. Florida. Florida is my guess. Southeastern Louisiana. Come on. Yeah. Interesting. Catch a slider there, it looked like, on the outside corner for a strike. It was close. My opinion, though, on the matter does not matter. Home plate umpire Jordan Alvarado has the call on that one. It's 0-1 to Cruz. This one is hit. Almost, almost breaks Gavin Dugas' knee. Couldn't have been hit much harder right back up the middle. Tigers put another run on the board on the RBI single off the bat of Dill. 
Dylan Cruz. Buzzy, I don't know that you ever hit a ball that hard. Oh, your whole life. A couple times. I mean, you, did you see that? You're talking to the guy who hit the last homer in old Alex Box Stadium. But, no, I, it, that ball was hit that was hit very well. But we're going to we got to come up with something else. I mean, because every at-bat, Dylan Cruz hits the ball harder and harder. I, you, I, I don't have the <laughs> – I don't have the words. First and third for Tommy White. One out here. Tigers have scored three runs so far. Morgan is at third base. Odom with the pitch to White. Bye. This one is crushed to right field. I think you're right, Buzz. This one is going to come down as home run number three for Tommy White. Apo Taco, a three-run job. It is now six to nothing, Tigers. Well, I wasn't able to get the words out of my mouth before Tommy White deposited that ball in the right field bleachers, but I was just about to say, as hard as Cruz hit it, there's liable to be one right behind it as Tommy White seems to be seeing the ball really well over the last four to five games. And that's what's impressive is hitting the ball out of the ballpark that way. I mean, it couldn't have been more way out opposite too. field. 383 feet. It left the bat at 102 miles an hour. And now Cade Beloso looking to join the hit parade. Walked in his first at bat. Takes the first pitch high. It's 1-0. The ball cruise hit. I don't know how Dugas was able to get out of the way. <laughs> this one sails high for two balls and no strikes. Well, you you wouldn't have faulted him if he got hit by it because it, it, he couldn't move quick enough. I, I'm just glad he got out of the way. 2-0, high and tight. It's now 3-0. First of all, if he wouldn't have got out of the way, yeah, he'd, he'd have been out. He'd have a knee replacement surgery scheduled and, and, with and Dr. I, I Banks. I think it would have been more in the hip. <laughs> it would have hobbled him up pretty good. It was 100-plus for sure. The 3-0 high and away, and Cade Beloso draws his second walk of the game. Well, you see why this offense is so difficult, because they're patient, and, and walks and hit by pitches are part of the Jay Johnson philosophy for his offense. So as a pitcher, you think, okay, well, you know, I, I don't want to walk him. I want to throw the ball over the plate, but they've got so much power and can hit the ball all over the ballpark that you try to get too fine and too perfect as a pitcher, and then you put free, you know, you put, you give, issue the free pass, and then you got guys on base with dangerous hitters behind them. Another dangerous hitter, Jordan Thompson, takes a pitch right on the outside corner for strike number one. Up until this point, let's see, two, three, four walks, five walks tonight. That's 77 on the year. Swing and a miss there from Thompson, took a big cut. Got a piece of it right back into the middle of Ryan Snell. And it's 0-2. Which coming into the game, they were 33rd in the nation in base on ball, 6th in the SEC. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss again. Another healthy hack from Thompson, but he comes up empty. And that's out number two here in the bottom of the second inning. That is the third strike out of the night and the 100th strikeout of the year for this Tiger offense. Brady Neal now the hitter. Neal hit a ball off the hands up the middle and his last at bat with the bases loaded just enough to get the infield single. Takes the first pitch, a breaking ball downstairs for ball number one. That's right-handed pitcher number 14, Trey Morse, down in Lamar's bullpen starting to play catch. One-zero pitch. This one catches the outside part of the plate, and the count now evens up to Brady Neal, the Tigers' catcher. Neal hitting 333 on the year, hit his first home run over the weekend. Fastball there catches the inner half, and it's one ball and two strikes. Not that Beloso is a threat to steal at first base, but LSU only five of ten on the year in stolen bases. Yeah, that's not a big part of their offense, but really I, it doesn't it's need not to be. a big part of anyone's <laughs> offense these days. This one fouled back over the grandstand. Neal stays alive in the 1-2 count. 
Well, I no- saw something the other day of, if, you know, there were 15 major league teams. Ricky Henderson one year stole 130-something bases, something like that, and there were 15 teams last year that didn't have that many stolen bases as a team. Right. This one's hammered down the line. Fair foul is the only question. It's going to land in foul territory. They will call it foul, but that one was hammered. One, two, high and tight. It's two and two. I'll never forget Neil's first at bat. That first Friday night, the wind was howling in. It was freezing cold. And nobody wanted to hit. And his first at bat, if you remember, he hit a triple out to right center field that hit the bottom of the wall on a line. 2-2 pitch. Fouled back in the screen. Neil putting together a good at bat. Well, we know the talent offensively. Coach Jay Johnson talks about it, and he draws a lot of walks. That's part of his offense. Got a good eye at the plate. I've yeah. been very impressed. Leads the team, 13. Very impressed with the defense. You got a catcher that can lead the team in walks. You got something. 2-2. Two, two. Again, fouled into the screen, and this is why he's able to draw so many walks. He's very, like, very much like Dylan Cruz. He's not scared to take early in at bats. He's not scared to not swing at that pitcher's pitch early in at bats. And then because he knows when he gets late, that pitch right there was a pretty good pitcher's pitch. But he knows he can let it travel and foul it back into the screen and stay alive. This one's popped up into the infield. Ethan Ruiz, Major League Pop flies in foul territory, drifting back. That one was way up there. Not routine, I would say, at all. Ruiz will have nightmares about that one, especially if Brady Neal is able to capitalize. I know the the using two hands thing is a thing for little leaguers. I get that. It just he, he it just, does look bad when you miss it and you just do the one-handed. I, I think the wind as the ball went up over the grandstand probably caught it, brought it back to the field of play. It looked like it had him a little – Stirred up. This one is slapped down the first baseline, but foul. Uh, let me say this, too, and I've mentioned this multiple times. Catching pop-ups in college is not like catching pop-ups in Little League. Oh, no. It is so hard. It, you can't imagine how difficult that play is. So I'm not certainly not making fun of the young man because that is not an easy play. Well, you've been there. Another 2-2 offering. This one hit off the end of the bat. It'll be on the ground at Banks. Doesn't have a chance at... Beloso at second. Instead, he'll take the out at first. Four to three, ground out for Neal. The Tigers, four runs on two hits. They made one error, and they leave one runner stranded as we head to the top of the third inning. 9-1-2, due up for the Cardinals here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Third 
Christian Little out for his third inning of work, a strike. It's 0 and 1. Swing and a miss there. Little quickly gets ahead. No balls and two strikes. Ruiz hitting ninth in the lineup. Another one of those seniors hitting 270 on the season. Swings at one in the dirt there. Neil will tag him out, fired around. That's one quick out for Christian Little, another Super One Food strikeout. And Christian Little not messing around, getting ahead early and doesn't want to mess around with 0-2, just goes right at him. And that's a perfect two-strike pitch when it looks like a strike the whole way and just darts out of the zone. Back to the top now. Kanan Dodge, the shortstop, will take the first pitch, slow and away for a ball. Dodge, a strikeout victim to lead off the game back in the first. Swing and a miss. Little with the cutter on the outside corner. Even to the count at one and one. Always a fan of a 0-2 pitch that catches the plate but is either up in the zone or in the dirt. Swing and a miss there. Had him out front on the off-speed pitch. Looked like a changeup. It's one ball and two strikes. Little wasting no time. Don't love the wave fastball where it's just a non-ball, non-pitch. Leaves this one over the plate. And Dodge gets the barrel on it out in the left field for a base hit. A mistake by Little. Hasn't made many of those tonight. Fans, visit your local Kubota dealer and see why Kubota is the number one rated reliability under 100 horsepower tractor in the USA. Visit LSUKubotaDealers.com for your nearest Kubota dealer and test drive a Kubota today. Ben McNaughton now the hitter. Swing and a miss from Little. Off speed again. And again, Little ahead of count, 0-1. This one's fouled back into the netting, right behind home plate. And Christian Little jumps ahead 0-2 to McNaughton, who was also a strikeout victim in his first at bat in the first inning. Little set. The pitch grounded right at Dugas. Four to six to Thompson to three. He throws it right off the dugout. Beloso, nothing he could have done about it. In front of the dugout, there's a railing with some netting. It did not go into the dugout, so the runner will stay at first base. The Tigers will have two outs. Doesn't get more tailor-made than that. It doesn't, but I'll tell you, McNaughton runs pretty well because that ball was hit hard, and you said it best, Doug. It was as tailor-made as a double play, and I'm just going to tell you, even if Thompson catches that ball and the ball's on the money, I think he beats it out. It was close. Nice breaking ball to start off the at-bat to Kevin Bermudez. And that's why Thompson actually rushed it because he had to get rid of it quick and make a strong throw, and, and the ball just sailed on him. But, again, I think even a good throw on the money is not in time. This one misses low and away. It's one and one. Bermudez grounded out to Napolt on two hops to end the first inning. One one breaking ball a butte for a strike. It's one and two. Christian Little has recorded three strikeouts through the first two and two thirds. He's looking for number four. The pitch misses low and away. Runner is off. Neal's throw is not in time. And McNaughton with the wheels in safely with a stolen base two and two is the count that's mcnaughton's ninth stolen base of the year he's nine for nine you know what you're talking about buzzy i mean he got down the line is all i'm saying he did two two hit high in the air to left center field trey morgan slides over and camps out underneath it he will squeeze it for out number three no runs for the cardinals on one hit they leave a runner stranded, no errors by the Tigers. We come back, Tigers lead it six to nothing. We're headed to the bottom of the third. Eight, nine, and one do up. Kling, Napolt, and Dugas on the LSU Sports Radio Network. This inning with an extra base hit. The band section 120, Roman 6-7, received a one-on-guys prize pack on the under for chance to the victory grill 
at the end of the season. Bridgeway Hospice is the official hospice of LSU Athletics. Choose Bridgeway Hospice for the care is personal, celebrating 10 years of care in Greater Baton Rouge, Indiana, and Blackburn areas. Bridgeway Hospice says, Go Tigers! <laughs> Welcome back. H&E Equipment Services is the official construction equipment partner of LSU Athletics. For all of your rental needs, call 877-700-RENT or visit herentals.com today. Paxton Kling will lead it off for the Tigers. First pitch, a called strike. And Landon Odom, the relief pitcher, brought in the second inning. Gets ahead, 0-1. This one is hit right back up the middle. Odom, thankfully able to get out of the way. Paxton Kling, another ball hit right square on the button. And he leads it off with a sharp single to start off the bottom of the third inning. Paxton Kling takes a pitch out over the plate and doesn't try to do too much. When we talk about good hitters, they use the whole field and they work back through the middle. You hear that all the time. And there's a lot of hits to center field. You text down there and find out how many balls off the bat over 100 miles an hour so far. I'm betting over three, more than three. Breaking ball. The pole was showing bunt. He pulls it back, takes it for ball number one. Cruz's ball was over 100 miles an hour. Tommy, well, we know Tommy Tanks was 102. That ball from Kling had to be 100 miles an hour. A little slash bunt there from Napoli. He showed bunt, pulled it back, took a cut, and just chopped it foul toward the LSU dugout. And what if it was 98? Will it make a difference? No. Yeah, I mean, it's that's still I, mean, I, I know what my eyes tell me. <laughs> okay. You still only hear that as a pitcher. Like, it, when it comes by, you know it comes by you because you see it off the bat, but you don't really get the eyeballs on it. You more just hear it. It's, come by. It's it sounded scary, fast. It's a scary <laughs> feeling, exactly. <laughs> Two and one now. As Napole trying to put together in a bat here and maybe have a big inning. Ten run rule is in effect. The runner is off with the pitch, slapped right at the third baseman. They go five to four to three. <laughs> Napole just hit it too hard. Ethan Ruiz was sliding to his left. And a good break, I would say, there for the Cardinals as if Ruiz weren't moving to his left with the runner running. Well, I'm not sure why he was crashing towards second base. He really kind of stole the sure base hit away from the pole, who hit it again sharply, but I, right at him. So a 5-4-3 double play. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for this pitch here, but we've we got to have a conversation here, Doug. Sure. That pitch was down and away for ball one. That was a five to six to three double play. You know, that was the shortstop cover. Is that what they had to shift over? Well, over there? It, Dodge got there quicker than Banks could, and so he just did it. Made an HWA Derek Jeter type play, if you will, and I just guess. turned it over. Or, no, it was it just, was pretty impressive. Okay. Well, he had to get there quick because Kling was off and running, and he can run. It's two and zero, oh, by the way, to Gavin Dugas. The Tigers leadoff hitter who hits this one on the line down the left field line. It will get down right on the warning track, hop off the wall, and Dugas will go in sliding 
with a two-out double. Dugas continues to stay hot. And one for two tonight now. Yeah, he's seeing the baseball well in the first part of this season. Pitch out over the plate, and he's strong enough, just pulls it. Maybe a one little bit the off the bat, but still hit it hard. Another hard hit ball for the Tigers, kind of been the theme of the night so far. Lamar pitching, not fooling anyone as Trey Morgan digs in. Morgan 0 for 1 tonight, lined out to the third baseman, his first at bat, was hit by a pitch, came around to score in his last at bat, takes the first pitch away, it's 1 and 0. Doug, just to go back on that double play, while it was such a nice play, I don't think Banks could have got there in time with the runner he was breaking, on him. breaking yeah. from first base, stealing the bag. It, it, you know, everything had to be done so quick. You got to tip your hat right there to that Lamar. Was a nice play. A good defensive double play. Morgan gets jammed, fouls this one down the first baseline. That moves the count to one and one for the Tigers now left fielder. If you're just joining us on the airwaves or at home on TV. We're broadcasting live to both our radio listeners and our TV audience tonight. This one misses high. It's three and one. The score is six to nothing. The Tigers have put six on the board with six hits. Lamar, no runs. We're on two hits. Trey Morgan, the two one pitch. This is hit on a line down the left field line. It's just foul. Came down right near the Lamar bullpen mound. Maybe a couple feet, but there's another LSU hitter, Buzzy, showing the ability to hit the ball with power the other way. Well, we, we saw what Tommy White did. We know what Dylan Cruz can do, but Trey Morgan may be the best <laughs> at hitting the ball all over the ballpark on the, on the team. Almost had one there. 2-2 two, two count, two outs for Trey Morgan. The pitch from Odom. Reached out to stay alive, slapped it over the left side grandstand. It stays at two balls and two strikes. LSU has right-hander Will Helmers getting loose down in their bullpen. Again, Morgan stays alive and fouls this one high in the air. This one a little further down the left field line. Again, the 2-2. This one is hit in the air, out to center field. McNaughton tracks back about 15 feet, just shy of the warning track, and pulls it in for out number three. The Tigers, no runs on two hits. They leave one runner stranded. No errors by the Cardinals. They lead it six to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Four, five, six, due up for the Cardinals on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
The roar of LSU fighting Tiger baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to the top of the fourth inning. Tigers leading Lamar by a score of six to nothing. Christian Little has been very good for the Tigers so far. Works it to a 1-0 count. But Ryan Snell jumps all over the next pitch and drives it into the Caesars Sportsbook left field landing. Snell, the most dangerous hitter in this lineup. Led the team in home runs. Coming into the game with four, that's now five. Also led in RBIs and doubles. Well, now you see why he's been named to the Johnny Bench Award watch list as the nation, one of the nation's best catchers. So the first blow dealt by the Cardinal offense on Christian Little is a solo home run. Little fires back with a cutter on the outside corner for strike number one. This one's hit high in the air to right center field. Paxton Kling on his horse. Cruz calling him off at the very last second. Man, Cruz had to cover a lot of ground there to get to that ball. An impressive play by the Tiger center fielder. Now you hear the term five-tool player, talking about all the tools it takes to be a baseball player. You don't see a lot of five-tool <laughs> players out there. That young man, Dylan Cruz, is one of them. Indeed. As good a player offensively, I mean, he made that look super simple tracking down a ball. You said it best, Doug. He covered a lot of ground to get to that. That was Josh Blankenship. This is Kirkland Banks. Hits a line drive right at Napold, who keeps it in front. A nice play by the hot corner tonight, Napold. And that is two away here for Christian Little in the top of the fourth inning. That ball had some juice on it. Yeah, good baseball play all the way around. Banks. Hit a missile down to 30. Kind of got the in-between hop did Napolt and made a good throw over to first base, and Beloso picked it out of the ground. And already Little dealing to Luke Bumpus. Bumpus walked in his last at bat. Falls behind here 0-1, and, and Little misses on the inside part of the plate. It's 1-1. One and one. Little up to 52 pitches on the evening. 52 pitches, 35 strikes. The 1-1, one, one, a beautiful breaking ball. Right over the middle of the plate, it's 1-2. and two. Little working quickly. The 1-2 pitch down in the dirt. And that will even up the count. That's a, I'm okay with that 1-2 if you want to try to get the hitter to chase, but once it gets to 2-2, two -two, you've got to get right back in the zone. Make it happen, pitch. Correct. 2-2 two -two with two outs. Here's the pitch. Fastball chopped up the middle. Thompson giving chase. Sliding down, making the play, but the throw will be not in time. A great play there from Jordan Thompson. Had to go down in a sliding fashion. Popped up as quickly as he could. Threw a dart right at Beloso, right on line. But the ball just not quite hit hard enough. Took too much time to get there. Well, the, yeah, the ball stayed on the ground too long. And if Thompson's playing in a normal shortstop position, he probably makes that play, I would say, relatively easy. He was shaded over in the six hole or to his throwing side uh, is where he was shaded over to. It just took him too long to get to the ball. Now Jackson Cleveland. One line drive, one hopper to Thompson. He just tosses it across to Beloso. For out number three. One run on two hits. They leave a runner stranded. No errors by your Tigers. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Cruz, White, and Beloso on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Thank you for voting for tonight's racing games. Be the DJ's song of the game. 
Winning song tonight is Boys of Summer by Don Hinley. Racing games, one love. New pitcher on the mound for the Lamar Cardinals to start off the bottom of the fourth inning. He will face three, four, and five, Cruz, White, and Beloso. It's going to be Trey Morse. Cruz. First pitch, fastball up high for ball one. Trey Morse out of Alvin, Texas, came in from Panola Junior College. Falls behind to Dylan Cruz, 2-0. This one finds the edge. It's two balls and one strike. Cruz tonight is one for one, average up to 476 on the year. This one hit foul over the netting just above the Tigers' dugout. And the count is two balls and two strikes. Cruz stays alive, fouls another one back into the screen. And the count remains. Tigers lead it six to nothing on six hits. They scored two in the first, four in the second. Lamar on a solo home run to lead off the fourth inning, put their first run on the board. They have four hits through their four trips or four innings of work. Cruz, another foul ball. This one chopped down the third baseline. Stays alive at two and two. Morse for Lamar is 88 to 91 with the fastball. He's got a curveball and a slider. Likes to go to the slider more. 2 2 just misses off the outside corner. And the count's now full to the Tigers center fielder. Ball four downstairs in the dirt. Cruz now reaches base safely in all three plate appearances. And Tommy White already with a double and a home run tonight. Will stand in. White up to 406 now. And now has 14 RBIs on the year. Good fastball there on the outside corner. White falls behind 0-1. The one vicious cut fouled back into the screen. And Tommy Tanks now behind 0-2. Morse for Lamar is making his fifth appearance. And eight and a third innings pitch, giving up four runs, three walks. And does have nine strikeouts in those eight and a third innings pitched. 0-2, swing and a miss, but it gets away from the catcher. Cruz able to advance. White will head back to the dugout. First base was occupied and Cade Beloso will have a chance with a runner in scoring position in less than two outs. 
correct. Most people think, oh, why didn't he run down to first base? Catcher didn't catch it, but you said it, Doug. First base when it is occupied. That's just a strike three, and you can head back to the dugout. That is correct. Cade Beloso hits this one high in the air out to left center field. Left center field, excuse me, left fielder and center fielder giving chase. Ben McNaughton, the center fielder, pulls it in. Cruz able to advance to third base. Ball just deep enough, so Cade Beloso gets the job done. Runner now to third base with two outs. Well, good job by Cruz. The rule is you, if it's going to be a bang-bang play at third, you don't need to take the chance when the out when the catch makes two outs you're already in scoring position it's most likely going to take a hit to score you anyway uh but cruz knew that mcnaughton was camped under and he said well i can get the third easily anyway jordan thompson takes the first pitch upstairs for ball one he's hitting 342 coming into this at bat tonight he is 0 for one with a walk and a strikeout in his last at bat Fastball grazes the outside corner for strike number one to the Tigers shortstop. Brady Neal waits on deck. Big swing, big miss from Jordan Thompson. It's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, Thompson was sitting dead red there, and Morse just came with the off-speed pitch, got him out in front. Nice pitch, 1-1. More set, kicks for the one-two down in the dirt. Nice job from Snell to keep it in front. It's two and two to Thompson. Two-two, swing and a miss. Breaking Paul, didn't break, fooled him. And that will do it for the Tigers here in the bottom of the fourth inning. No hits on no runs, or no runs on no hits, I should say. No errors made by that Cardinal defense. One runner stranded. Tigers lead it 6-1 to one as we head to the top of the fifth inning. 9-1-2, due up for the Cardinals on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Baylor to the field is our contestants. Our contestants will need to hop down the field. The first to cross the finish line wins a Whataburger prize pack and free Whataburger for their entire row. All right. Contestants, on your mark. Get set, go! And they're off. Landon and Baylor. It's a tight race at the halfway mark as they approach the finish line. And we've got... A winner in yellow. The yellow stat is the winner. That is Langdon who is in the yellow stat this evening. So Langdon is our winner. Langdon has won a lot of our price pack for himself and everyone in his row. What a burger. Proud to serve Tiger fans. 24 hours a day. Now pitching for LSU number 48, Will Helpers. Helpers is the new pitcher for the Tigers. They <laughs> want the Lamar Fitbit. Third base from Ethan Ruiz. Ethan Ruiz in a 1-0 count hits one sharply, but right at Napolt makes a little Ole play down there at third base. A nice pick at first from Beloso. And a quick first out for the new pitcher for the Tigers, Will Helmers. Will Helmers making his second appearance in three and two-thirds innings. Giving up five hits, four runs, no walks, and three strikeouts. And he is a strike thrower. 
Sometimes too many strikes. It's good to have that effectively wild syndrome a little bit. Back to the top of the order. Helmer starts it off with a strike to Kanan Dodge, the shortstop. Dodge one for two tonight. Helmers quickly with the 0-1 offering. Gets ahead 0-2. Misses low and away here. Ball gets away from Neal, and it's one ball and two strikes. Fans, TJ Ribs, legendary Louisiana barbecue and home of the Jay Johnson Show, is the official barbecue restaurant of LSU Athletics. Fastball gets him looking, bat on his shoulder, and that is out number two very quickly for Will Helmers. About 94 miles an hour, too, on the old number one, the heater. Down right at the knees. By the, way, by the way, TJ Ribs has every game all the time to go tailgate packages, and they do event catering. This one is hit sharply past the diving Jordan Thompson at shortstop. It'll trickle out in the left field for a two-out base hit for Ben McNaughton, the second batter in tonight's lineup for the Cardinals. Uh, Left-handed pitcher Hunter Hesseltine getting loose down in Lamar's bullpen. This game's moving so quickly, I have to tell you where TJ Ribs is located. <laughs> Uh-oh, one gets back to the backstop on Neal, gets away from Helmers. Runner moves up to second base. Now suddenly the Cardinals with a runner in scoring position, but with two outs. Of course, you can visit TJ Ribs. Their Segan Lane location or an Acadian, and also online at tjribs.com. 1-0 to Helmers, misses inside. Bermudez has to hop out of the way. It's 2-0. Tigers lead it 6-1. If you're listening on the airwaves, Breaking ball misses away. It's three balls and no strikes to Bermudez with Ryan Snell, the most dangerous hitter in this lineup, lurking on deck. Three zero finds the strike zone. It's three and one. Little movement down in that LSU bullpen. There's a left-hander. It looks like he will enter the game for the Cardinals in their bullpen, and that is called a strike. Bermudez started to toss the bat back. Thought it was off the plate, but once again, Jordan Alvarado calls it a strike on the corner. Here's the 3-2 pitch fouled back into the screen. By the way, Jordan Alvarado is at home plate. Michael Summers is over at first base. Blake Thames is at second. And James Ainsworth is down the line at third. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the fifth inning. The pitch again fouled back into the screen. And Will Helmers in a battle with Kevin Bermudez, who tonight, by the way, is 0 for 2. He grounds it out to third base and flew out to Trey Morgan and left. Again, the 3-2 pitch. Again, fouled back into the screen. Bermudez proving to be a tough out. Three, two, fastball on the outside corner. Another super one food strikeout. Gets him looking there and the Tigers out of the mini jam with that runner in scoring position here in the top of the fifth. No runs on one hit. They leave a runner stranded, no errors by the Tigers. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tigers lead it six to one. Neil Kling, Napolt, do up on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Together, 
Right, check out the video board to see what's coming up. And plus, you got Lex, which is brought to you by our lady of the way, the official healthcare provider of LSU Athletics. The Tiger Calendar of our lady of the way, brought to you by our lady of the way. Your attention, please, now put your feet over on number 43, which is the missile time. Missile time is the new picture for you to come on. Fans, Dugley DeBosier stands up for the purple and gold and fights for Tiger fans all across Louisiana. Dudley DeBosier, proud to be an official partner of LSU Athletics. And don't forget, when the Tigers win, you win. Enter promo code LSU50 the day after an LSU baseball win to receive 50% off your online order at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Bottom of the fifth inning, Tigers lead it 6-1 to one over the visiting Lamar Cardinals. Brady Neal, Paxton Kling, and Ben DePold due to lead it off. New pitcher on the mound. On her hassle time. A left-hander, first pitch, misses with a ball. Big swing and a miss there from Neal. Fastball right over the outside part of the plate. It's one and one. Hessel time making his third appearance in two innings of work. He's given up no runs, no hits, no walks, three strikeouts. The one-one misses away. It's now two, two and one to Brady Neal, who tonight is one for two. His average is at 321. Another swing and a miss from Neal. We'll even up the count at two and two. Two-two pitch. Hit high in the air. It'll get foul and out of play. Although a valiant chase by Ethan Ruiz over at third base. Looks like another right-hander starting to toss down in the Cardinal bullpen. 2-2 pitch, gets a piece of him. And that's another hit by pitch. The second of the game for the Tigers. And the 32nd of the year. And you mentioned earlier the leaders. How many does Southeastern have? 32's got to be close to the top. Southeastern has 54. Wow. Wow. That's in 12 games? <laughs> Jeez. Bunt attempt. Shown by Paxton Kling, at least he shows bunt, pulls it back for ball number one. I mean, we think it seems like every other hitter for LSU is getting hit. What it, what it must feel like for I the mean, Lions. That's, a, that's like four guys a game. Another one misses low to Kling. He's ahead 2-0. and oh. Kling tonight is one for two. Average sits at 400. Three and zero now to Kling. That one missed high. 
Hopefully Kling's able to find the barrel like he did in his last at bat. A missile right back up the middle. 3-0 pitch. Take all the way. Strike one. Right-hander Patrick Hale is the right-hander. Down in Lamar's bullpen getting loose. 3-1 pitch. Hit high in the air to right field. Bumpus has a long way to run to get there, but he will eventually catch up with it and squeeze it for out number one. Not a routine play, I would not say. Kind of in that no man's land down the right field line where you oftentimes see the first baseman, second baseman, and right fielder on their horse. Well, Bumpus was playing so far back yeah, and almost on the warning track. It took him that, tough. Yeah, that long to come all the way and make that catch on a full sprint. Now Ben DePold 0 for 2 tonight. Still looking to get that average over 200. Hitting from the left side against the left-handed pitcher from Lamar. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Napolt has been just fabulous down there at third base tonight. Oh, yes. Breaking ball, a butte. Just over the outside corner for strike number two. I mentioned earlier how the fly balls and pop-ups are tough in college. Playing third base with aluminum bats is not an easy thing to do. It can get on you pretty quick. The 0-2 misses upstairs, and that is ball number one. It did not be missed by much. Gavin Dugas, leadoff man, waits in the on-deck circle. One-two pitch, hit on a line to right field. It'll be down for at least a single. Neal around second into third without a throw, and the Tigers will have runners at first and third after the single from Napolt. That was a good job of hanging back. That was an off-speed pitch that spun up in the zone, and Napolt kept the hands back long enough and then just let them work, was able to drive it to the, the right field line. Now the red-hot Gavin Dugas, one for two in the game. Hitting 415 on the season. This one's hit on a line to right field, but it looks like it'll be right at Bumpus, who comes in charging. The throw will come home, and they will get Brady Neal at home plate on the tag up. A perfect bullseye strike throw from Bumpus out in right field. He was behind the line drive, and that will do it for the Tigers. He'll score no runs on one hit. They leave two runners stranded. We'll come back for the top of the sixth inning. Tigers lead it 6-1 to one on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
Helmers back out on the mound for his second inning of work. But he will start it off by plunking Ryan Snell to lead off the inning. First pitch. Got Snell. He'll head down to first. And there will be more movement now in the LSU bullpen. Left-hander Riley Cooper getting loose down there in the Tiger bullpen. Fastball misses upstairs. It's 1-0. Fans, Super One Foods has super low prices on all your game day favorites. Up your grocery game and score big with Super One Foods. Fastball misses upstairs again, and Brady Neal is going to go out and talk it over with Helmers. While they do that, Jay Johnson also out of the dugout. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball, the LSU Sports Radio Network, and streaming on the LSU Sports mobile app. So we have a mound visit, Jay Johnson, the entire infield, of course, the pitcher and catcher out to talk it over. It's a 2-0 count with no outs. First pitch of the inning, got Ryan Snell. A hit by pitch sent him to first base. Jay Johnson just giving his bullpen time to develop. Looked like he has Riley Cooper down there and maybe Garrett Edwards. Yeah, double barrel action. The righty Edwards, lefty Cooper. Now Josh Blankenship, 0 for 2 tonight. Grounded out to third, flew out to center field. His last at bat takes the first pitch. Low in it, or excuse me, the 2-0 offering. For a ball, it's three balls and no strikes. Helmers was good in his first inning. Had a couple strikeouts, both looking. Fastball there, finds the strike zone. It's three and one. See if Helmers can climb the ladder. That's one step closer. Fouled back into the screen. That makes the count full. Three balls and two strikes. Back in the 21 season, Will Helmers was 6-2. He had right at a 4 ERA. Freshman All-American. Yeah, 39 and two-thirds inning. Had 36 strikeouts, 17 walks. Full count. Fouled back off the mid of Brady Neal. Helmers back on the rubber and ready. The pitch. Another foul ball into the screen, three in a row. Helmers out of Metairie, Louisiana, at the Jesuit High School. Do you have any Jesuit uh, teammates oh, on your yeah. team? Oh, yeah. Had to hear about that, huh? Mm -hmm. Another foul ball, four in a row. Pretty nice at bat here by Blankenship and Helmers, for that matter. He started at 3-0. and He's battled back with five. Six straight strikes. Yeah, who's going to give in first? Just going to keep pounding with fastballs. Helmer's at 92 to 94 miles an hour all night. Check swing. Did he go? They'll say he did at home plate. That is now one out as Helmer's records his third strikeout, another Super One Food strikeout. Uh, Helmer's went with the nasty. slide. Yeah, went with the slider. 3 2. He was in swing mode, was the Lamore hitter, and Said, let's just see if we can go with the slider and get him to chase a little bit. Is that ball was a little split finger? Ball is a little bit out of the zone, but he was again swing mode will get him. Now Kirkland Banks one for two tonight. First pitch, fastball didn't miss by much. Ball one. Banks, the second baseman tonight. For head coach Will Davis, former Tiger, fastball catches the outside part of the plate, 91 miles an hour. One ball and one strike. Will Davis in his seventh year as the skipper for Lamar. One one, slap right at Napolt, can't field it, but he tries to get it across the infield. It will not be in time. He's coming up limping over at third base. Not real sure what the injury may be. But it got on him in a hurry. 
he could not he knocked it down but the ball trickled away toward the bag and he just couldn't recover in time to get the speedy banks at first base so the guessing they'll call that an error well it was hit right at him i mean it's gonna, it's going to be a tough error if it is but it it was absolutely smoked and they're going to give it to him it's it's the right call but that's just a tough one because it had some mustard on it it was moving if he would have fielded it cleanly, no brainer, 5 4 3 double play, but that will get Jay Johnson. Sorry, that wasn't Jay Johnson out there for the last visit. That was actually pitching coach Wes Johnson. This is Jay Johnson. He usually goes out there to make a pitching change. He is not indicated as of yet. There's a righty and a lefty. There will be a change. He goes to the right hander. This pitching change is powered by Sunshine, your hometown. John Deere dealer in Louisiana. It'll be Garrett Edwards. We'll tell you all about him when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Welcome back. First pitching change of the night for your Fighting Tigers. Excuse me, the second pitching change actually of the night. Christian Little started it off, worked a solid first three innings. Excuse me, first four innings. Then Will Helmers would come in in relief. And now he'll give the ball to Garrett Edwards. Garrett Edwards making his fourth appearance of the year. He's 1 0 with the 169 ERA. And five and a third inning pitch, giving up four hits, one run, no walks, and four strikeouts. Little work, the force four, as I said, allowed four hits, one earned run. Helmers, an inning and a third, one hit allowed, three strikeouts, no walks. Edwards starts him off with a slaughter. Neal can't find it, and both runners will advance. The umpire was kind of, well, it was, I'm not going to say he was hiding it intentionally, right. but as Neal was searching and everybody was screaming down 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 the umpire didn't realize i don't think it was right behind his feet so now they're second and third things are getting interesting here for garrett edwards in this tiger defense the 1-0 to luke bumpus who just made the great play to finish the bottom half of the fifth inning caught a line drive out in right field and threw brady neal out at home plate to end the inning 1-1 one, one is the count. Slider from Edwards on the outside corner. Once again, Neal can't find it. This time he's able to locate it before anybody can advance, and it's 1-2. Well, this is a big hitter here for a number of reasons. You said it, Doug. The, the play in the last half inning of the double play, throwing a guy out at home plate, and then if Lamar can get a big hit here, Bumpus driving two runs. You're looking at a 6-3 game. It changes the complexion of it. One two pitch slider just misses low and away and it's two and two. Yeah, it's a big moment in the game. The biggest opportunity by far for this Lamar offense.
Edwards comes set. Kicks. Fastball. Excuse me. Breaking ball. Misses low. It's three and two. That's two really good takes from Bumpus. Not easy. No. One and two and two and two. Two pitches that caught a lot of the plate. Just darted a little low out of the zone. He was able to hold up. 3-2 pitch. We'll see which one they go with. Another breaking ball. And this one is hit off the end of the bat out to left field. It will get down in front of Morgan. Banks thought about trying to score from second, but they hold him up. A run will come in to score. That's Ryan Snell who reached with a hit by pitch, and it'll be first and third. Scores now 6-2 to two with one out in the top of the sixth. It was good base running by Banks as he knew that ball was going to get down, but with one out, those are the decisions a third base coach has to really, you know, put himself out there well when it's nobody out or two outs it's pretty easy you either hold them up or you're sending them with two outs because you're making them make a play with one out that's when the decision has to come pitch there from edwards misses off the outside court what they had going for them to be able to score that run was the ball wasn't hit hard it was a lazy lazy line drivish fly ball and trey morgan who's a left-handed thrower was moving toward that right field line it had been tough for him to pivot around and make a strong throw at least but none of it matters as they held him up. It's one and one now after Edwards gets the breaking ball over the outside corner. Jackson Cleveland, the hitter, he's 0 for 2 today. And Edwards, 95 mile an hour heater there on the inside black. It's one and two. Cleveland grounded out to second base in the second inning and a shortstop. Back in the fourth, we'll take either one of those right here. Off the hands, back into the screen. Foul ball to stay alive. The count stays at one and two. Breaking ball down in the dirt. Gets into swing and miss. First base is occupied, so... He'll head back to the dugout. That's a big second out for Garrett Edwards, still first and third here in the top of the sixth. Yeah, if you're pitching coach Wes Johnson and you want Garrett Edwards to go right after Ruiz, the nine hole hitter, you don't want the top of the lineup coming up with guys on base, ducks on the pond, if you will. Ruiz tonight 0 for 2, takes the first pitch downstairs for ball one. 95 miles an hour again on the gun from Edwards. That strikeout, another Super One Foods strikeout. The seventh of the night for this Tigers pitching staff, and Edwards misses again, this time low and away, it's 2 and 0. Edwards gets the sign he likes, kicks, fires, misses low and away, breaking ball. It's three balls and no strikes to the ninth hitter in this lineup. Yeah, a little surprise, 2-0 going to the off speed, yeah. the nine hole. This one's a fastball, catches the inside part of the plate. 96 miles an hour there from Edwards. It's three balls and one strike. The 3-1 fouled into the screen right above that Tiger dugout. It gets down to the bullpen area. And Garrett Edwards has earned a 3-2 count with two outs here in the top of the six, looking for the eighth strikeout of the night for Tiger pitchers. <laughs> Tiger fans showing their support. Here's the 3-2 fastball, two hopper out to Thompson. Shortstop fires it across the diamond, a strike to Beloso. And that's going to do it for the Cardinals here in the top of the six. The Tigers score, I mean, excuse me, the Cardinals score one run on one hit. The Tigers make one error. They leave two runners stranded 
We're coming back for the bottom of the sixth inning. Tigers lead it 6-2 to two on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The Central Reds in tonight's game. Welcome to the box, and thank you for your support. Our Fighting Tiger Baseball. And now check out the right field board as we recognize Tigers for the show brought to you by Morgan Cruz and White to lead it off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Your Tigers lead it six to two. Morgan takes the first pitch for a strike. And the bottom of the six is underway. Hunter Hasseltine out for his second inning of work. Gets Morgan to chase the 0 1 pitch. Morgan behind 0 and 2. Hasseltine quickly with the 0-2, just misses with the breaking ball. And Morgan will stand in for the 1-2. One, 1-2 two. One, two pitch, swing and a miss. He chased it out of the strike zone, and that's one quick out to start off the bottom of the sixth inning for the Lamar Cardinals. Well, that's the pitch Hesseltine goes to. He relies on heavily. That off-speed pitch, particularly with two strikes, the slider. He likes to try to get you to chase it when he gets you to two strikes. That was a nice job against a, a hitter in Morgan that's usually well-disciplined. Another well-disciplined hitter, Dylan Cruz, has walked twice tonight and hit a single up the middle about as hard as you can hit it. Hassel time working on his third scoreless inning or fourth scoreless inning of the year misses high to Cruz it's 2 and 0 oh. Two zero pitch fouled off the front foot and the All-American will have a 2 and 1 count I think it's a chance Cruz and Skeens go one and two in the draft. Well, wouldn't that be something, huh? That one misses away. It's three and one. I mean, I think there's a chance. Well, uh, there's, I, there's definitely a chance they'll go in the top five. There's absolutely a chance you know? Cruz is number one rated prospect. So, I mean, he's obviously a chance three to go one. Cruz takes his third walk of the night. And that will put him up there. Let's see. Has Brady Neal walked? No. Cruz now has the team lead. He had 11 coming in. He's up to 14 now. But look, Doug, I'm no scout, but what? I mean, is there anybody better than I mean, right I now, I, I, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody better than Skeens. Right. Period. I mean, I, I, so it's like hard to think if he's, you know, he's not number one. He's because of Dylan Cruz. Tommy White hits one high in the air. It had the look. It just doesn't have the distance. Bermudez will squeeze it for out number two. 
I guess the point is, if 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 you're if Skeens is not number one, and I get it because Cruz is, then well, I mean, you'd be hard to think he's not number two. Well, I mean, he, <laughs> he, he hit a hundred seven or eight times the other night. I, I think at least he might even been a hair more than that. And you know, I mean, we'll, we'll know more for sure when you know a couple weeks when SEC play starts to go. And oh man, I'd take either one of them. I'll tell you that much. Big Cade Beloso now takes a bender for strike number one. Beloso's average has fallen to 583. He's 0 for 1 in the game. Well, I think you're right, Doug. I think in a couple weeks when SEC play gets here, you know, we see him finishing off maybe lesser teams and lesser hitters. We'll see if he can do it against the Floridas of the world. Off speed misses there to Beloso. That'll even up the count. I mean, I'm putting my money on skeins, but yeah, it's still, mean, we still need to see it. It's, it's not just the 99, 100-mile-an-hour fastball. I mean, I'll let this pitch go, and I'll tell you what I think his best pitch is. 1-1. One, one. Misses low. It's two balls and one strike. So he throws, you know, 100 four-seamers. He's got a changeup. He's got a slider. But that two-seam fastball that comes in there on the right-handed hitter's hands at 94 to 96, that's the tough one. Swing and a miss from Beloso. It's 2-2. Two and two. Beloso out in front of the off-speed pitch. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Cruz is on at first. Tigers lead it 6-2. to two. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike number three. That'll do it for Beloso. That'll do it for the Tigers. As they score no runs on no hits, they leave a runner stranded. No errors by the Cardinals. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Tigers lead 6-2 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Seventh inning, top of the seventh inning. Tigers lead 6-2. to two. Garrett Edwards back on the mound. This one is hit sharply out to center field. Cruz going to take a couple steps back. He'll put it away. One pitch, one out. Can't do it much better than that. Garrett Edwards. And the Tigers facing in this inning 9-1-2. No, excuse me. 1-2-3. and three. So that was Kane and Dodge. Ben McNaughton now the hitter. Fastball just misses upstairs. Edwards behind 1-0. and The 1-0. Right down Skip Bergman Drive. One ball and one strike. One thing we know about McNaughton is he can pick him up and put him down. Ground ball here. Infielder's got to get rid this of it. This one a chopper to the left side, and Thompson's going to have to get rid of it. Two hops out to the shortstop. He fires a strike to, hey, Trey Morgan over there at first. That's a familiar sight. Two away. Some defensive changes for the Tigers. Josh Stevenson enters the game. He's now in left field. And Morgan moves over to first base. 
beautiful job by Thompson. He knew who was running and did a good job of getting around the baseball and getting rid of the baseball. First pitch now to Kevin Bermudez, the three hitter in the lineup. 0 for 3 tonight, takes the first pitch for a strike. The 0-1 painted on the outside corner for strike number two. This one choppered in the pole. He's going to have to get rid of it quick. Able to do so. The stretch by Morgan, and that's out number three. Three up, three down for the Tigers. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. We will stretch it out and head to the bottom of the seventh inning for the Tigers. Thompson, Neal, and Kling. Two up, they lead it 6-2 to two on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Our Lady of the Lake is proud to be the championship health partner of LSU. Together, Our Lady of the Lake and LSU are creating transformational change and impacting Louisiana with a new standard for health care, research, and education. Together, Our Lady of the Lake and LSU are champions for Louisiana. Together, we roar. Learn more at ollrmc.com slash LSU. A new pitcher on the mound for Lamar, the right-hander. Buzzy, what you got? Yeah, Patrick Hale, 6'5", 240-pound sophomore, transfer from Glenn Junior College. Hale's making his fourth appearance of the year. He's 1-0 with the 3-1-2 ERA, an eight and two-thirds innings pitch, giving up eight hits, three runs, three walks, seven strikeouts. He's 88-91, to 91. fastball slider, really, two-pitch guy. He's got a couple other pitches, but you'll see fastball slider. A lot of times a slider will play like a cutter. It'll be hard and just that sharp little, uh, you know, that sharp little dart in action. Yeah. Blinn, what former Tiger went to Blinn? I know this. I think there's actually a couple. I think there is. There's one that, you know. I actually think Quinn Stewart went to Did pretty good. I think there's a couple. Yeah, I think there's a couple. One that I played with. Jordan Thompson will lead it off, hits this one hard right on the line and one hop out to the shortstop, Kalen Dodge. And he does a nice job. Excuse me, Kanan Dodge. Give me a this nice half job of out number one. Give me this half inning, Doug. Let me ponder upon this question. Okay. I know this. Maybe one of our Twitter listeners. Chad Cooley. No. I played here like six years. Hunter Gomez. No, you got to stop just you gotta blurting stop. out. Now. <laughs> it's too much. It's <laughs> Stevenson in there now. Shows bunt. Pulls it back. Strike one. Josh Stevenson making his first plate appearance of the game. One for three on the year. Check swing there. And it will be strike two very quickly. On the new left fielder. 
Of course, the younger brother of former Tiger great Andrew Stevenson, now a big leaguer. Swing and a miss, got him to chase upstairs. Two quick outs for the new pitcher, Hale. He's another big fella. All right, Doug, you got me. You got me stumped. Are you going to let the Twitter followers give us the answer? Eight strikeouts now for Tiger hitters. Um, yeah, we can give it an inning or so for. Okay. At DT9 Tigers at Buzzy Heidel 2. That's H A Y D E L 2. There's only one Buzzy. It shouldn't be tough to find. But you're going with the who played My junior college at Blend. This should be. Can you give me a year? So 97 or 98? 97. Right? Was he a pitcher? No. You oh. kind of ruined it. Well, I'll get this. Be like, this should have been. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Danny Higgins. No. Galveston. That was close. Indeed. Paxton Kling after the offensive timeout. Jay Johnson takes a minute just to uh, give the pitcher a little breathing time as the first two outs happen very quickly here in the bottom of the seventh inning. You're going to kick yourself. <laughs> I know I am. That's what's going to aggravate me. Wow. Kling takes the first pitch, a good pitch, at the knees on the inside part of the plate. It's over. Oh, I got it. Okay. It's easy. You feel you feel silly now that yeah, it took you so long. I did. Well, I was going through the whole lineup. I mean, I should have got it eventually. Here's the 0-1, and it is hammered to left center. Kevin Bermudez, the left fielder, didn't move a step as Paxton Kling has hit his second home run at the purple and gold. 417 feet. Another ball leaves the bat over 100 miles an hour. That one 105. It's 7 to 2. And as we're talking about former Tiger players, I look up and I see a ball look like it was heading to Tiger Stadium with our view. <laughs> Tiger Football Stadium with our view here. I mean, I'm not buying the track, man. I think that was further than 417. No, I believe it was. And it was very reminiscent of my former teammate, of course. Brandon Lars. Yeah. Was that your guess? Yeah, it was. Because I really feel bad for you. No, I knew once guess. once I started thinking about it, I'm like, well the JUCO guy was it was only one year he stayed at LSU. Yeah, it was right. it was Brandon Larson. I, I Forty had. home runs later, he was gone. Ben Napolt now the hitter takes the first pitch low and away. Which y'all don't realize, you know, the people the Ronnie Rances of the world who's gonna be uh, like, This is unbelievable. How do you not know this stuff? I was like eight years old, no, not paying attention to older than this that. going on. I was trying to Work on my baseball career for crying out loud. 2 0 now to Napolt, who is one for three tonight. Buzzy, you were like 12. I was 10, if we're getting I mean, technical. I mean, <laughs> and you're not going to want to hear this. I remember 96 two, more than I remember 97. Two, uh, so do I. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> and that didn't sit well with you, I know. But. No, of course. Warren Morris, that got it all. So championship golds tonight, just yeah. because of that. I mean, that's 3 0 count to Napolt. Misses upstairs, and it's ball four with two outs. Tigers have something going here. Back to the top of the order now for Mr. Gavin Dugas. Dugas tonight is one for three. Had a double back in the third inning. I'm getting blown up right now by <laughs> ball one. <laughs> oh Ronnie Rance just said you should be, you should have a one inning penalty. Well, th that's what I'm saying. Ronnie was all 35 years old in 97. So, I mean, <laughs> he's 46. I'm sure he remembers exactly where everybody went. I mean, a miss from Dugas. It's one and one. Dugas waved at the off speed pitch out of the strike zone. You saying Ronnie's old? I, I, mean, I did go to a surprise birthday party last year. I think it was his 60th or 70th. I'm, I'm not sure, but the one-one <laughs> slider catches the strike zone. It's one and two to do, guys. Well, it, I didn't say it, but I, you know, once I got through it, I knew I figured it was Brandon Larson. I mean, and how hard could that be? And I knew it wasn't Blair Barbier, and you know, I mean, could have was, been West Davis. That's another JUCO transfer from that year. 
One, two. Dugas chases it in the dirt. He'll hustle down to first base with two outs, and that will wrap things up for the Tigers. They do get one run on one hit. The Paxton clean solo shot to left center. They leave a runner stranded. No errors by the Cardinals. It is seven to two. We'll come back for the top of the eighth inning here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Take a taste and see. Where it began, I can't begin. First pitch of the top of the eighth inning is laced right back up the middle. That was Ryan Snell. And we pointed out before the game and a couple of bats leads the team in most of the offensive categories. He squared two up tonight. Buzzy, stop messing around on Twitter. I need you to pay attention. Josh Blankenship in for the fourth time tonight. 0 for 3 so far. Well, we had to have some people. First pitch from Garrett Edwards. A strike at the knees with a breaking ball. Check swing. They'll appeal down to first base. And the first base man in black says that he went. And I think he was right. The 0-2 pitch. Slider misses low and away. It's one ball and two strikes. Doug, you said you thought there was a couple others that went to blend. You know we're missing a very big piece of the puzzle to I the LSU like, tradition. Yeah, yeah, and I feel uh, LSU, the year. LSU history. I'm going to give you the year. 2000. Trey Hodges. Well, slap, check, swing. It slapped foul into the net to stay alive. It's one and two to blanket chip. I'm going with the it's, it's, it's Twitter people, so as long as they're right. But Trey Hodges went to bling. Yeah. College, College World Series MVP. Yes, he was. One ball, two strikes. Just misses downstairs. And that will even up the count. Super guy as well. You ever met Trey? I have. Yeah. Good dude. Edwards kicks for the 2-2, chopper out to Dugas. He's going to have to let it travel. Unable to turn the two there. It was too bouncy of a chopper. But Dugas does get the first out at first base, retiring Blankenship for the fourth time tonight. That will bring up Kirkland Banks, the second baseman, 0 for, excuse me, 1 for 3 tonight. And once the once the play took Dugas to his left, he was probably not going to turn a double play anyway. And then you add that with the the slow chop that it was. It was a smart play just to get the out at first. Nice pitch there from Edwards to get ahead on the outside corner to Banks. It's 0-1. Banks out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, went to Barb High School, the tradition-rich Barb Buccaneers. 
There's a fastball for strike number two from Edwards, another 95 mile an hour heater from the tall righty. Those bar bucks, boy, they turn out some college baseball That's players. That's amazing. <laughs> The 0-2 hit off the end of the bat. This is in no man's land. Kling charging hard makes the great ESPN play. Sliding in towards the first baseline. Super play by the freshman for out number two. We see it so often, that lazy fly ball right behind first base. Everybody's on their horse. Such a difficult play to defend, but Paxton Kling does it about as good as you can do it from right field right there. Luke Bumpus, the hitter. Bumpus has also made a nice play out in right field. This one is hit foul into foul territory. Morgan grabs it about 15 feet shy of the wall to keep it in play. That's the third out of the inning, and the Tigers still lead it 7-2. to No runs. On one hit, no errors by the Tigers. They leave one runner stranded. We'll come back for the bottom of the eighth. It'll be Morgan, Cruz, and White on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Another pitcher on the mound for Lamar. It's going to be Foster Kreitzer. He is the sixth pitcher of the game for the Cardinals. Kreitzer making his sixth appearance of the year. He's 1-0 with an even two ERA in nine innings pitch, giving up six hits. Three runs, only two earned, one walk, and ten strikeouts. Fans, remember this game brought to you in part by Capital One, offering checking and savings accounts with no fees or minimums. What's in your wallet? Throw goes down from the catcher. Again, it'll be Morgan Cruz and White to lead it off for the Tigers. Here in the top of the, or excuse me, the bottom of the eighth inning, Tigers looking for a couple extra runs here. Just a little insurance, but Buzz, five, would put this one in the books. That's what we're going with? I mean, if my math is right. Ten run rule after seven, right? Big swing from Morgan. This one's popped foul. Not far behind home plate down the third baseline. Nice job from Ruiz, who had to run a long way to get there. But Morgan, one pitch, one out to start off the bottom of the eighth. Now Dylan Cruz. Cruz has reached all four times tonight. He's drawn three walks and hit a rocket back up the middle in the second inning. This one is fouled back over the LSU dugout. And Cruz falls behind 0-1 to Kreitzer. 
Six pitches tonight again for Lamar for the Tigers. Little, Helmers, and Edwards. Breaking ball to Cruz there. Misses off the outside part of the plate. It's one and one. Another pitch misses upstairs, and the count moves to two and one now to Dylan Cruz. Lots of action down in the <laughs> Lamar bullpen. I was just about to say, it looks like a football sideline down there in the Lamar bullpen. You got guys stretching. Or a yoga class. <laughs> it's all kind of stuff going on. Two one. This one catches the inside part of the plate. And that evens it up now to Cruz. Little, me little medicine ball work. There's uh, all kinds of stuff. It's like... This one off the outer edge. It's now full count to Dylan Cruz, who is looking maybe for his fourth walk of the night. I mean, we've got guys throwing toward the fence. We've got guys throwing this way. This one's hit hard, but right at the shortstop. Has trouble fielding it cleanly, and Cruz will reach on the routine grounder out to short. Took a maybe a little bad hop right when it got to him, but normally you would see a shortstop make that play. E6 is the ruling. Well, Dodge is a really good player for this Lamar team. He got his feet kind of stuck in quicksand. Like the ball, sometimes the hardest ball to catch or hardest ground ball to field is the one right at you and that ball was hit right on the nose right at him he just kind of got his feet stuck now big tommy white stands in takes the first pitch for a ball it's one and oh white up to 382 on the year again drove in three runs earlier with about an, as opposite a field home run as one can hit a three run home run that one misses right over the helmet of white it's two and oh We'll have a quick timeout as the ball has made its way down right behind home plate from the Cardinals bullpen. I'd say I did that a couple times. It's a lonely feeling. You're just kind of looking up. <laughs> Whistling. You're the only guy down there in the bullpen, and you uncork one. It gets by everybody. You give them the 10-cup reference. Who, who threw that ball? Exactly. Who, who did that? The 2-0 slapped into the screen foul. Yeah, I'm going to crawl in a hole. Now, Tommy White doesn't get cheated at the play. No. When he gets in a hitter's count, it's he's taking a hack. Got some bad intentions. A 2-1. Breaking ball misses high, and it's 3-1 and one now to Tommy White. There's part of me that wants to call him Tommy Banks. I have to check my... Because there's, there's some probably, similarities. I probably. guarantee you this guy gets you a first down on third and one. Breaking ball is a strike. Cruz off with the pitch. He'll be in safely. Beating the throw. It wouldn't have mattered if Banks would have fielded it cleanly or not. He was not able to catch it cleanly. But even so, Cruz got a great jump. Yeah, we've seen Jay Johnson a few times in the season. They don't run a lot, but 3-1 with a good hitter up there, especially... When somebody that he thinks can handle the bat, he likes to put him in motion. You get a pitch you can hit, you're usually going to hit it 3-1. And Tommy White gets hit in the back. He's a magnet for that type of thing. That's the third hit by pitch of the game for this Cardinal pitching staff. Tigers have runners at first and second now as Tommy White will get the pinch runner. That looks like... Mick Paul over at first base now. So that'll be a night for Tommy White. And we will have Alex Malazzo now. Malazzo entered defensively for Beloso, so he's sitting in that spot. He's got a chance to do some damage. And he does. Line drive out into the left center field gap, and it's going to get down for at least a base hit. Malazzo thought about stretching it into two, but he goes back. Cruz comes in easily to score, and Tommy White, well, no, Mick Paul, actually, who's running for White, 
gets from first to third. So the Tigers will have runners at first and third now with one out. They lead eight to two here in the bottom of the eighth. Now, I like the approach Bubba Lazo. He wasn't messing around, wasn't going to wait to get to two strikes. He works early in the count with the runner in scoring position. And that was textbook out of the box with the first baseman going to be the cutoff man from the throw from center field. Alex Malazzo was able to take a big turnaround first just in case there was a bobble. He could get to second. There was not. He was able to retreat back to first. That's how you do it. Fans at Walk-Ons, we provide ourselves and our scratch-made dishes like fresh, never-frozen seafood, burgers, salads, and Cajun Creole specialties to add a little spice and extensive beer taps and cocktail offerings. Walk-On Sports Bistro, bringing people together. We will have a pitching change for the Lamar Cardinals. The seventh pitcher of the night, we'll tell you all about him when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Pitching change, now pitching for Lamar, number six, Daniel Cole. Cole is a new pitcher for the Cardinals. First and third, one out, Jordan Thompson, the hitter. Lamar has just gone to the bullpen for the sixth time tonight. Thompson shows bunt, pulls it back. It's a ball off the outside corner, 1-0. and They've gone to Daniel Cole, making his sixth appearance, has a 1-5 ERA. Does have two saves. Another bunt. This one, Thompson tries to get down. The bat comes out of his hand. It's 1-1. One one. Cole in six innings, giving up. One run, one walk, and five strikeouts. He's 88 to 91 miles an hour. Fastball, curveball, changeup. Thompson tries to lay down another bunt. Fouls this one back into the catcher's mitt. We'll see if Jay Johnson keeps the bunt on with two strikes. What say you, Buzz? I would take it off. Jordan's so. a good enough bat handler the one two it's a good pitch slider just misses off the outside corner and will davis having some words with jordan alvarado jordan alvarado held up the hands about eight inches apart and said it's this far relax i don't know if it was that far though this one is wrapped to left field it'll get down might be extra bases Nick Paul will come in to score. Jordan Thompson in with a sliding double. Another RBI for Thompson. Tigers lead it by a score now of nine to two. Right, Coach Johnson put the bun on early with Thompson and didn't, wasn't able to execute. He says, I'm not gonna let you down. Coach just wraps one, as you said, Doug, down the left field line. That ball was hit well. If anybody, but ball was hit too well, but Malazzo, not a great runner. Coach Jordan at third base held him up, rightfully so. No, I think it was a good call there to hold him up. Of course, if he'd have known the throw would have gone to second, he would have sent him. 
So now, Josh Stevenson with a chance to walk this thing off. First pitch, a strike. This one's hit off the end of the bat. It's going to be trouble in shallow center field. Nice job there from McNaughton to cover the ground to come in and get it. It was not deep enough for Malazzo to tag up. So fly ball to the center fielder for out number two. Tigers still have runners at second and third. And Paxton Kling. Curious if Malazzo held up on his own or that was Coach Jordan down at third base that held him up. Because I'm a little surprised they didn't try that with two outs to, to put the pressure on to get that 10th run across. Stevenson thinking, too, man, I need that sack fly. One swing of the bat here could do it. First pitch to Paxton Kling, who's two for four tonight, called a strike. Kling's average now up to 407. This one is hit high in the air to right center field. McNaughton gives it chase just shy of the warning track. Pulls it off the top of the grass for out number three. Tigers score two runs on two hits. They leave two runners stranded. One error committed by Lamar. We'll head to the top of the ninth inning. Nine to two, your Tigers lead on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Easton Culp's going to pinch hit to lead it off here in the top of the ninth inning against Garrett Edwards. First pitch misses downstairs. It's 1-0. and Any defensive replacements? This one, a chopper out to Thompson. He's got to charge hard to field it. He does, throws it across, makes it look easy to Trey Morgan, and that's one quick out, just the way Garrett Edwards would like it to start off the top of the ninth. Thompson continued to play good defense at shortstop. Love the transition from glove to throw in hand. Not an easy play. Not that you couldn't have made it, but it was a challenging play. Big swing there from Landon Rogue. That's well, actually Rokey. 0 and 1. Another pinch hitter. Another swing and a miss. And. Edwards quickly ahead 0-2. You can get in a slump defensively just like you can offensively. And I think a little bit last year, Thompson just For sure. the confidence kind of left him. He's playing well right now. 0-2 hit high in the air. It looks like it'll be Dugas call it at second base. Dugas a couple steps forward, then a couple steps back for out number two. Tigers one out away from improving their record to 12-1 and on the year. Four more non-SEC games. You got three this weekend against Samford. And one when 
Blake Dean brings his UNO privateers here next Tuesday night. And Monray Vanderwalt, another pinch hitter. Will Davis emptying the bench here in the top of the ninth. Takes a hack at the first pitch from Edwards. Fouls it back. It's 0-1. Another swing and a miss. Edwards one pitch away. The 0-2 down in the dirt. Tried to get him to swing. He wasn't doing it. So the count's now one ball and two strikes. Nice 0-2 pitch there from Garrett Edwards. Swing and a miss. Blew it right by him for strike number three, and that will put this one in the books. 9-2. Your Tigers are winners. On this Wednesday night, they improved their record to 12-1. Lamar falls to 10-3 on the year. Stay tuned. We'll come back to tell you how this one unfolded on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Lost those to Clint Warren. 